welcome everyone to this lecture on the topic of power so uh, how do we define power uh, so power is usually associated with situations when some work is being done on some body or uh, some force is being exerted on a particle which is going on a path and we have to judge the amount of work done in some time interval so let us define power what is power so power comes with a simple definition that the time rate of work being done or energy transfer to a body is defined as power now what do we mean by that we mean by that let's say if a particle is going in a certain path and some force is acting on that particle let's say that force is f then this force f can change with time it can uh, change in magnitude can change in direction so how do we quantify the amount of work done per unit time by that force so uh, one way of defining that is simply by writing a derivative of the work done by the particle so the work done on the particle can be written as d by dt of the work being done by this force f so this is defined as the instantaneous power acting on the particle now this can be written as this dw by dt and uh, let's say the velocity of the particle is some v at some instant and the angle is some theta then the power delivered to the particle is called force into velocity into cos theta where theta is the angle between force and velocity so this can also be written as the dot product of force and velocity since the dot product of two vectors is the cos theta value so this is the instantaneous power as is written in this case instantaneous power delivered to a body or a particle is defined as dw by dt or fv cos theta next uh, we can also define what is the average power delivered in some bigger time interval the average power delivered is simply the total work done divided by the time interval taken by uh, the particle so that would be the case in which let's say i have an incline and uh, the body is going in this way that there is some gravitational force acting on it some normal reaction acting on it so uh, till some point let's say p on the incline the incline is some smooth and then after the point p the incline is having a rough terrain so if i were to ask you what would be the work done by the frictional force acting on the particle in the region when the particle is going on a smooth surface and when the block is going on a rough surface then you would say there would be some change in the work done by the friction force since the force is absent in the smooth uh, section but if i to want to calculate what is the average work done during the complete motion then what would be the useful formula so the useful formula would be p average is equal to the net work done by friction force divided by the time interval so uh this is the summary of work done that is it is the time differential of the work done uh, by a force or by the net force acting on a particle it is also defined as the dot product of force and velocity vector at the cos theta and it is can be defined in average terms so what is the unit of power the unit of power is 1 watt and uh, it is simply 1 joule per second one joule of work is being done per unit time that is one watt one common unit of power is also one horsepower so that is some 746 watts
next let us do some questions to get some understanding to what power is so the first question is uh, there is a body of mass m1 it accelerates uh, uniformly from rest to v1 velocity in t1 time what is the instantaneous power delivered to the body as a function of time t so first of all we know what power is power is work done per unit time and we have to define it in instantaneous manner that is the differential of work done per unit time so uh, let us jump to our board we have to calculate the instantaneous power right dw by dt so uh, it can also be written as force into velocity into the angle between force and velocity which is zero in our case it is zero in our case because we have to calculate the work done by the all the forces acting on a particle so when all the forces are acting on the particle the particle is going in the direction of forces only so uh, that's why the force and velocity vector are parallel to each other and there is no angle between them angle is zero so this becomes force into velocity force is mass times acceleration and velocity is v now we know the particle has accelerated from zero to v1 velocity in t1 time so acceleration of the particle is simply v1 by t1 and the velocity of the particle at any time is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration into time which is v1 upon t1 into time t so substituting the value of velocity v in this equation and acceleration a in this equation to calculate the instantaneous power we get mass into v1 square divided by t1 square so this question does not give us a complete uh, visualization that what power is but power is basically saying that how much work done is being squeezed into some particular time interval whether that time interval is high the power would be less whether when the work done is high then the power is more so in that way you want to define give a quantitative meaning time wise meaning to the work being done on a body in the same way we look at the next question a body is moving along a straight line by machine the distance moved by the body in time t is proportional to t to the power 3 by 4 t to the power 3 by 2 and so on so uh, in this question the work being done by the force is uh, done at such a rate that the power is constant the power itself being delivered is constant that is f into v is some constant so the force acting on the particle is some mass times acceleration velocity is simply v and this is equal to constant and now we have to find the function of position so from this expression we have to come to position so what should be the correct flow of thinking how should we think in such a question so the point is that we want to reduce these expressions to position so starting from acceleration we can come to the position so acceleration has to be some function of some velocity or some position or some time from there we can form a relation if let's say we won't having we we didn't have any relation whatsoever given the question then we won't be able to form so acceleration can be written as v d v by dx into v is equal to k it can also be written as dv by dt into v equal to k that would also give us the same result so this gives us v square dv is equal to k dx and integrating this value let's say the particle started from rest we can say this is some v3 by 3 3 v part 3 by 3 is equal to some kx now we can write v is some k by m into 3 into x to the power 1 by 3 and this is also to the power 1 by 3 so so 
if we are integrating this value of v square um we uh write velocity as dx by dt it is equal to some constant value of this let's say this constant is some a into x to the power 1 by 3 into dt so this would be x to the power minus 1 by 3 into dx is equal to a into dt and integrating these values we would get x to the power 2 by 3 into 3 by 2 is equal to a into t plus some constant c so this implies that position is proportional to 3 by 2 power of time so uh, this gives us the option t to the power 1.5 next question is a very interesting one a man is moved uh, it leaps vertically into air from crouching position to keep the to take the leap man pushes the ground with a force f to raise himself the center of gravity rises by 0 0.5 before he leaps after the leap the center of gravity rises by another one meter so what is the maximum power delivered by the muscles so we have two kind of options whether the maximum power is delivered at the start of the motion or at the takeoff so the man is in crouching position he raises himself and then he takes the leap so when he's taking the leap there is no force acting on the man the force exerted by the ground would go on to be zero so that means that part of the motion is out of context in terms of maximum power delivered by all the forces acting on the man since the number of forces would be less what we are concerned with is the case when the man is trying to raise his center of gravity by being in contact with ground so the man would be exerting some force on the ground right so this is the man it is in some crouching position and it is it would gain some height and also gain some speed after which it actually becomes airborne so in the first case let's say the center of gravity of the man is at zero height it is at zero meters in this case the center of gravity of man is at, is at 0 0.5 meters height when it is about to take the leap and finally the man is at 1.5 meters above ground so we have to figure out at what point all the forces acting on the particle on the man are delivering maximum power so we can easily say the force acting on the man is in upward direction by the ground and the gravitational force is mg so we have to figure out when force is maximum force is we would be assuming force is acting constant on the man when it is raising itself so the equation newton's second law equation would be f minus mg is equal to some m now what would be this acceleration be the man has finally gained after taking the leap he has gained one meter height only one meter height he has gained so one meter into two into its acceleration let's say its acceleration is some g because when it is moving upwards its acceleration is actually to gravity is equal to v square that is the this velocity v square is equal to 2s so this gives us v is equal to some root 20 meters per second so that is the velocity with which it leaps from the ground in fact this would be the maximum velocity of the man so what would be the acceleration of the man when it is going undergoing this 0 0.5 meter motion so in that case the uh, acceleration would be it has traveled by some half meters its acceleration is some a and its final velocity is 20 so in this case initial velocity was v squared is equal to 2s in this case final velocity is v squared is equal to 2s so the acceleration is some 20 meters per second square so this gives us the net force acting on the man f minus mg equal to 2a this would be equal to some 30 times mass of the man which is 70 kg so the net force acting on the man is some 2100 newtons fifth 
we can say what would be the maximum power delivered or the, to the man so that would be the case when it has gained maximum velocity so the maximum power delivered to the man p max would be simply the force acting on the man in upward direction like the velocity which is maximum so that would be some 2100 newtons times the velocity which is root 20 newtons so this would come out to be sub 6.26 into 10 to the power 3 newtons so at the start of at the at the jump off stage that is jumping it would be delivering the maximum power the muscles of the man would be delivering maximum power to the man so it would be some 6.236 10 to part 3 watt at takeoff next question we have a two body masses two bodies of equal masses drop on a planet of two different heights a and b what is the average power delivered by gravity to the two masses in last second of motion are p and pb then so this is the average power delivered p and pb when the mass are dropped from two different height a and b with a being greater than b the average power delivered is p and pb so what is the relation between p and pb so we know what is the displacement of a particle in nth second of motion the displacement of the particle in nth second of the motion is simply u into 1 plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1 so this is independent of the height with which the man has uh, the particle has uh, fallen down but it would depend upon uh, how much time it has taken the particle has taken in uh, in falling down by what that i mean is that let's say the particle who has uh, fallen from height a and there is a particle falling from height b now initial velocity is zero for both and acceleration is same for both but the displacement in nth second that is the last second of motion would be varying depending upon how much time it has taken the nth second the value of n it has the particle has taken in falling down definitely the particles time in falling down to through some a height would be more than the time taken by the particle in falling down falling down to b height so that means displacement of the particle uh, in the last second of motion of AF particle would be more than displacement of the particle in last second of motion for BF particle. So the power delivered, average power delivered is simply the force acting on the particle, which is the same for the force of okay, both the cases, and the displacement divided by the time taken. So this would come out to be more for A than B. So that means option A would be correct. So uh, let us do one question from previous lecture. So uh, let, this question is a mass M is attached to a string uh, to, a, to a rod which is connected to a hoop on another end. It falls to a height h like this, and uh, after falling through h, it uh, sticks to a ring or a hoop, and uh, it goes in a circular motion without being obstructed by the hoop. So it goes in a circular motion. We have to calculate the minimum value of h so that the block completes the full circle. So this is the easy one, since we know that for a rod case, when a mass is connected to a rod, we do not require any velocity at highest point of motion that means that when it has fallen through h height it will gain some kinetic energy and all the kinetic energy would be converted into potential energy just after just, just as it is at the highest point it would be having no velocity so we would say that the net particle acting net velocity of the particle at the highest point of the portion required is zero. So the height required at the highest point
is equal to v square divided by 2g this would be the h required so this would simply come out to be the length of the rod <clears throat> next question we have a smooth hemisphere and uh, the particle starts moving from x it goes to y so this is a question for you how would you solve it um, so simply the particle is uh, being kept on a hemisphere at x it starts its motion from x and it continues its motion up till y where it loses its contact so we have to find an equation between sine phi and cos theta so what we are working our working would be we would be drawing uh, we would be writing the equation of potential energy and kinetic energy at these two points this angle is some theta this angle is some phi so we would be writing the potential energy and kinetic energy at let's say this point b and at this point a then we would say that what is the kinetic energy at a plus potential energy at a plus kinetic energy at b plus potential energy at b so uh, and then we will be writing one newton second law equation that what is the gravitational force acting on the particle at b that would be mg sin phi this angle is phi and uh, the normal reaction would vanish at point b so all the centripetal force would be provided by mg sin phi so it get mg sin phi equal to mvb square by r and then we will be having to write these values so it get the option option c that sin phi is equal to 0.66 cos theta so i hope you learned something from this lecture and uh, thank you for joining and have a good day